Well, hello and welcome to Sunday Encore, where we have candid conversations about the practical applications of Sunday's message. Well, we're back for another episode of Sunday Encore, and we'd like to sit down and recall the truths of Sunday's message and consider some practical application for our everyday lives. If this podcast has been an encouragement to you, I would love to invite you to share, subscribe, like, give us a five-star rating wherever you may listen. It would greatly help us reach more people with the hope of the message of Jesus. Uh, Today is a little bit of a different episode. We're in summer mode here. We got lots of different vibes going on for Sunday Encore. And um, I'm your host, Spencer, and I am solo today. I'm going to just give you a quick recap and some practical applications about Sunday's message. And it was an incredible service we had all together. And the message in and of itself, we wrapped up our Outsiders series, the stories of God's relentless pursuit. And I hope for you that this message series has been an encouragement as it has to me and just reminding me of that reality that God so deeply loves us, so deeply pursues us. And we have been going so hard after the feelings that we feel that actually separate us from that reality. Mentally, the feelings that we feel of being not good enough, of not having enough, of being too far from God, of doing too much to be used by God, of of actually all these things that are not always actual realities, but the feelings that we have of them feel even more real than if they were true to be themselves. And the reality is that God so deeply wants to use you. He has a plan and a purpose for your life, and he has called you to be on the inside of a relationship with him to live out the call that he has predestined for each and every one of us. And on Sunday, we talked about how to respond when you feel forgotten. It was an awesome message. We talked about the story of Gideon in Judges chapter 6. And I'm not going to go through all the details of the message today. I'll give you the bullet points. But it was a really cool, cool perspective as we go on, um, just to give some context. In, in Judges, Israel has basically separated themselves from God in their own way. They sin, they fall away from the plan and purpose that God has for them. They worship the idols of the nations around them. Obviously, they find themselves in a pretty difficult situation when that happens, as normally it's not good for our lives. And and they they actually separate themselves from the purpose that God has for them. They find themselves in a bit of a rut, and then they repent, they conquer their enemies, they have a good time, and then they sin again. And it's pretty much this cyclical pattern that keeps happening over and over again. And we find ourselves... Uh, In the story of Gideon, after 40 years of peace and rest in the land, Israel was good. They had their redemptive purse, and yet again, they did what was evil in the sight of the Lord, the Scripture says. And we find ourselves where Israel has been given up to Midian, and the Israelites are preparing for the worst. The Midianite raiders are coming. They're going to come and take all their crops, all that they've sown, all their harvest. Everything's going to be wiped out by this enormous army, and they are left fearful crying out to the Lord to save them yet again from their foolishness. (laughs) And we find ourselves uh, entering into the story of Gideon. And Gideon goes through this process where he is hiding out. He's afraid. He's acting pretty cowardly, to be honest. And the angel of the Lord shows up to him and says to him, Mighty man of valor, the Lord is with you. And Gideon, first of all, is not operating like a mighty man of valor. And secondly, he is confused as to what it means that the angel of the Lord says the Lord is with you because it really doesn't feel like the Lord is with them at the moment. And he goes through this big, long thing of like, why has all this happened? Why have we been given up to our enemies? Why do I not see the God that I've heard about in past generations who led us out of Egypt, out of the Exodus? And and why has he says this? this quote, why has the Lord forsaken us? And um, the reality is is that Gideon has found himself here totally lost, totally in the feeling of being forgotten. And we went through this reality of how to respond when we feel 
forgotten. And, and that feel word is the pretty important emphasis in that phrase because the truth is, and point number one, is that when we feel we've been forgotten by God, we've actually forgotten God. Because God doesn't forget us. God doesn't forget his people. He doesn't forget his creation. Uh, but oftentimes it's because we didn't actually obey God in the first place. And, and point number one is when God speaks, don't delay. God gave uh, the Israelites a pretty clear command, follow and worship him alone, and things will be really good for them. He will give them the land. He will give them their enemies over to them. He will provide blessing for them. He will let the world know that they are God's holy people set apart for him. And they just obliterately failed at obeying that command. And point number one, when God speaks, don't delay. He speaks to the reality of be quick to obey the reality in which God has commanded you. Because we feel forgotten by God often because we haven't done what he's actually spoken in the first place. Or maybe it's because we haven't lived, been living in the reality that God deserves preeminence in our lives. Or maybe we just simply forgot his character and his nature. In, Rome, in Numbers uh, 23, verse 19, God's not a man that he should lie or a son of man that he should change his mind. God doesn't forget what he's going to do or the things that he said is true. And maybe you find yourselves not living like the Israelites, not living wicked or evil, but you actually um, just didn't take the first step that God actually asked you to. And maybe you find yourself like, God, where are you? I don't feel you like I used to. What's going on? Why can't, when I read the Bible, why don't I actually like experience things that I used to or in, in prayer? Can I not feel you like I once did? And maybe a question to ask yourself is, is did you obey God or is there something that you forgot? that God has called you to do that you actually have not walked in and not walked through fully because it's not that God stopped talking. It's that oftentimes he won't tell us the next thing until we do the first thing. And, and point number two is that when God calls, don't deny. There, The beautiful reality is even when we walk in disobedience, even when we don't obey the voice of God, that nothing can separate us from God's unending invitation to his mercy. The Lord prophetically met Gideon, and specifically called out who he was, a mighty man of valor, even though he was not operating in that point, even though he didn't yet repent for his actions and sinning against the Lord and worshiping idols, he was still met with the mercy of God in that moment. And, and this truth that the only thing God forgets is the sin of a repentant person. He forgives and forgets our sin. And that's so beautiful. I encourage you, if you have yet to listen to the message, do, because I really want you to experience the freedom that Jesus has for you from the guilt and shame that you carry for your things of the past, because Jesus has forgiven you if you have repented, which means changed and moved forward. Point number three, when God prunes, don't distrust, meaning Gideon got to this point where everything was good. All this stuff happens. He finds himself ready to fight the Midianites, and he has a very small army, and God's basically like, hey, it's still too much because you're prideful, and you're going to say you did it yourself, and I want you to know that I did it, not you. So I need you to have less. And they get to this point where they have about 300 men in their army, which is ridiculous compared to the probably likely hundreds of thousands in the opposite enemy army. So it's kind of ridiculous, but when God prunes, don't lose trust because oftentimes when we feel like we have the least, God is getting ready to do the most because he is awesome and he needs nothing to provide the miracle, the movement, the blessing, the provision, whatever it is in your life, he can do it in him alone. We boast about our weaknesses because when we're weak, we're strong and God so specifically moved in Gideon's story and when God prunes when he takes away when he actually wants us to trust him don't lose trust he has a plan and point four which is really what i want to hit on here in this podcast today is that when god moves don't forget don't forget gideon's life had its ups and downs it had its turn he was kind of okay um, in the things that he did, I uh, kind of respected the Lord, kind of didn't, but he got to this point where he really wanted the Lord to rule over Israel, and then he died, and they completely forgot about Gideon, forgot about what the Lord did for them, and again, forgot who God was and completely started serving other gods and idols around them. And 
here's, here's what I want for us today is that when God has moved in and through our lives, you need to document and daily remind yourself of those things because it is so easy and way too easy to get the miracle, to get the provision, to get the blessing, to get whatever it is you need to make it through the day, through the glory and grace of God alone. And like he said, our pride so quickly seeps in and enables us to believe that we just did it ourselves, or maybe it just happened, or maybe not even that. Maybe you believed in God, and you believed that God did it, and you just kind of coasted. You had everything you needed, and you got comfortable, and you actually distanced yourself from the really active, real close, intimate relationship, faith-filled, moving forward with God. And here's the truth, my friends, here today listening, that when God moves in your life, don't forget. Don't forget. So here's a practical application that you can actually walk in this week, is that you can actually meditate on Scripture, and you can actually meditate on the reality of reminding yourselves of the faithfulness and the kindness and the goodness of God in your life. I want to encourage you in your prayer time this week, ask the Lord to remind you of what he's done for you. Ask the Lord to remind you all the good and kind ways he has is, he is, uh, moved in your life. That, Like this, uh, Psalm 23 says that, Surely your goodness and mercy, your unending love, will follow me all the days of my life. Sit down and ask the Holy Spirit to remind you and show you places and spaces in your past that he has been moving and working, that you would see the faithfulness of God, that even specific miracles or blessings or provisions that you've needed in the past, that God would remind you of those things, that he is a loving father, that he is so near to you and he has provided for you. And even if you're like, you know, I feel like I don't have any of those things, which we all do, but I get it. Sometimes it's hard to remember. I encourage you meditate on Psalm 103. Even the first couple verses, it's beautiful. It's, Bless the Lord, O my soul, and all that is within me. Bless his holy name. Bless the Lord, O my soul, and forget not all his benefits. Who forgives all your iniquities, who heals all your diseases, who redeems your life from the pit, who crowns you with steadfast love and mercy, and who renews your youth like the eagles. Just meditate on that scripture this week. If you're like, man, I find it really hard remembering what God did for me. It happens. I understand. Ask the Holy Spirit because he will speak to you. But um, meditate on that scripture, maybe to inspire or provoke your mind to to remember the goodness and faithfulness of God. The reality is, is that each and every one of us have a beautiful testimony of remembrance of what Jesus did for us. We have a Savior who came to earth, who died on cross, and who resurrected back to life so that we could do the exact same. We're not just broken and made whole. We're not just simply hurt and healed. We're not just simply bad and then good. We were 100% dead. And God raised us back to life through Jesus Christ. And, and that's a beautiful thing to remember that even before you repent, even before that you take the step towards God, God has already been working in and through your history, already been the, begun the saving process of healing, saving and delivering you and drawing you back to him because he is just that good and just that kind. So remember, just walk in repentance. Change your actions. If you've walked away from the Lord or if you haven't obeyed what God has called you to, do that this week. And and remembrance, actually walk through this week remembering the kindness and faithfulness of God over your life. Because when we remember those things, when we remember the faithfulness, it is real hard to stray away from such a good God. So I want to encourage you this week to take take time, take actual practical time to do these things and walk through them this week. Cool. Well, thanks again for joining us for Sunday Encore. I pray that this sparks Jesus-centered conversations in your home or your small group as you continue to grow in an overflowing relationship with Jesus. 